My father gave my stepbrother $200,000 for college, while I got nothing. So I decided to confront him and found out why and then I, I'm 23, fresh out of college and ready to take the next step. Or so I thought. After months of waiting for some clarity about my next move, I was hit with something I didn't expect. Betrayal. See, my dad, Henry, and I have never had the easiest relationship, but I always believed he was fair. At least, that's what I told myself. But fairness seems to have gone out the window when I found out that my stepbrother, Owen, got $200,000 from him for college. $200,000. Just like that. Meanwhile, I got nothing. I wasn't supposed to hear about it. I just happened to be at dad's house last weekend for a family dinner that felt more like a formality. I overheard Owen on the phone, casually thanking dad for taking care of the tuition situation. Tuition? That didn't sound right. I excused myself and, acting casual, went outside near where Owen was talking. And that's when I heard the numbers. Yeah, dad gave me $200,000 to cover everything. I'm so relieved. My heart dropped. I froze, staring blankly at the backyard fence. $200,000? For Owen? My mind raced. Why would dad do that? Why didn't I get a single cent for college? I worked part-time through undergrad to pay my own way while Owen was apparently being handed a golden ticket. Anger bubbled up inside me. I couldn't stand there any longer. I needed answers. Later that night, I couldn't take it anymore. As soon as Owen left, I cornered dad in the kitchen. Hey, I need to talk to you, I said, my voice already shaking with the adrenaline of impending confrontation. Henry turned to face me, eyebrows raised. What's up, Wyatt? What's up? I almost laughed at the absurdity of it. I just overheard Owen talking about how you gave him $200,000 for college. The look on dad's face was unreadable. He didn't seem shocked or regretful, just quiet. I did, he said calmly. I stared at him, waiting for an explanation. He didn't offer one. Why? I finally asked, my voice cracking. Why did he get that and I got nothing? I busted my ass working through school and Owen just gets it handed to him? Henry sighed, running a hand through his graying hair. Wyatt, it's not as simple as you think. Owen needed the help. I needed help too. I'm drowning in student loans, Dad. My frustration spilled over. I couldn't keep the emotion from creeping into my voice. I know Wyatt, he replied, avoiding my eyes. But this is different. Owen's situation. It's just different. That's bullshit. I snapped. What situation? He got a full ride while I got scraps. Dad shook his head, staring down at the floor as if the linoleum held the answers to all my questions. I don't expect you to understand right now, he muttered. But I made a decision that I thought was best for both of you. Best for both of us? How? What's so different about Owen that he deserves 200 grand? He didn't answer. Instead, he walked past me, leaving me standing in the kitchen, dumbfounded and furious. That night, I couldn't sleep. My mind kept running through every possible reason why Dad would favor Owen over me. There had to be something bigger, something I didn't know. So, I decided I wasn't going to let this go. If Dad wouldn't tell me, I'd figure it out myself. The next morning, I started with the most obvious place. My stepmom, Aurora. She'd been married to dad for as long as I could remember, but I had never really bonded with her. She was always kind but distant, more like a well-meaning aunt than a mother figure. I figured if anyone would know why Owen got special treatment, it would be her. I drove over to dad's place, pretending I wanted to stop by for coffee. When Aurora opened the door, she gave me that surprise smile she always used when she wasn't sure what to say. Wyatt, what a surprise. Hey, Aurora. I said, trying to keep my tone light. I was in the neighborhood and thought I'd drop by. She invited me in, and I followed her to the kitchen, my heart pounding with the weight of what I was about to ask. So, I wanted to talk to you about something. I began, trying to sound casual. It's about Dad and Owen. Aurora's expression flickered for a moment before settling into a calm smile. Oh, what about them? I overheard something the other day. I said, hesitating. About how dad gave Owen $200,000 for college, Aurora didn't respond right away. She just stared at me, her smile fading slightly. I see, 
Why? I asked, unable to hide my frustration. Why would he give Owen all that money and not help me at all? I don't understand, Aurora sighed, setting down the cup of tea she had been holding. Wyatt, it's complicated. There's more to the story than you know. Then tell me, I pressed. I need to understand why this is happening. She looked at me, her eyes softening with something like pity. It's not my place to say, she murmured. You should talk to your father. I did. I shot back. And he won't give me any real answers. Aurora sighed again and shook her head. Wyatt, I'm sorry. But this is something you'll have to work out with him. I left their house more frustrated than when I arrived. If Aurora wasn't going to talk, I had to find another way to figure this out. There was no way I was going to just accept that this was how things were. Not when something so huge had been kept from me. After hitting another dead end with Aurora, I knew I couldn't just let this go. My father wasn't one to open up easily, and I wasn't sure if he ever would. But I had to find out why I was left out while Owen reaped all the benefits. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more. Something nobody was telling me. That nagging suspicion that there was a deeper reason behind all this favoritism kept me up at night. I thought about reaching out to my mom, Mila, but that would open a whole new can of worms. My parents divorced when I was barely 10, and even though I had a decent relationship with her, I knew she'd fly off the handle if she knew what was going on. It wasn't just about the money anymore. It was about trust. It was about why my father had favored Owen for years and never made that clear to me. Still, I had to talk to someone. After a restless night, I finally called her the next day, trying to sound as casual as I could. Hey, mom, how are you? I asked, leaning against the counter of my small kitchen, trying not to sound too desperate. Wyatt, I'm good, honey. How are you doing? She said, her voice cheerful as usual. Good, good. Just wanted to check in. It's been a while, I replied, feeling a bit guilty for not calling more often. Actually, there's something I wanted to ask you about. Her tone shifted. Sure, what's up? I hesitated. It's about Dad. Did you know he gave Owen $200,000 for college? The line went silent for a beat. No, I didn't know that, she said slowly. That's a lot of money. Why would he do that? That's what I'm trying to figure out, I said, pacing the kitchen. He never gave me anything like that. I worked through college and had to take out loans, and now I find out he handed Owen 200 grand, just like that. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. Wyatt, there's something you should know. I didn't want to bring it up before, but maybe it's time. My heart skipped a beat. What do you mean? You were always a bit young to understand when it happened, but before your father and I divorced, there were rumors about an affair. I didn't want to believe it and I never had proof, but there were whispers that your father and Aurora had been seeing each other before we split. Wait, what? I froze. Are you saying Owen might not just be my stepbrother? I'm not saying that, Mom said quickly. I don't know for sure, but it's something I always wondered about, especially after the divorce. Owen was born not long after your dad and Aurora got married, wasn't he? I tried to do the mental math, but it was a blur. Yeah. I guess so. But that doesn't mean. I know, Wyatt. I'm not trying to stir up old drama. But if your father's been hiding something from you all this time, well, maybe this is why. I hung up the phone shortly after, my mind spinning. I didn't want to believe it. An affair? My dad always preached about loyalty and honesty when I was growing up. But if he had cheated on my mom with Aurora, and if Owen was really his biological son, it would explain a lot. I decided to find out for myself. I knew my dad kept old papers and documents in his home office. There had to be something in there that would give me the answers I was looking for. The problem was that I'd need to sneak in when no one was home, which meant picking the perfect time. Luckily, the opportunity presented itself just a few days later. My father and Aurora were out of town for the weekend, visiting some family friends. Owen was away at school. The house would be empty. That Saturday afternoon, I drove over, my stomach churning with nervous energy. I still had the key to the house, so getting inside wasn't a problem. Once I was in, I made my way to Dad's office. The room was as I remembered it. Stuffy, formal, and cluttered with old books and paperwork. I started with his desk drawers, rummaging through old bills, tax forms, and other mundane documents. But then, 
In the bottom drawer, I found something more interesting. A stack of old letters. They were tied together with a string, yellowing with age. I wasn't sure if I should read them, but at this point, I didn't care about privacy. I had the right to know what was going on in my own family. I opened the first one and started to read. The letters were from Aurora to my dad. The first few were innocent enough, dated around the time they had just started seeing each other after the divorce. But as I read further, the dates started to shift. Some of these letters were from before my parents' divorce. And they weren't just friendly notes. They were love letters. My stomach dropped as I realized the truth. My father had been cheating on my mom with Aurora long before their marriage fell apart. But that wasn't the worst of it. In one of the final letters, written just a few months before Owen was born, Aurora mentioned something I couldn't ignore. Henry, I know this is complicated, but we need to talk about our son. I'm pregnant, and I can't hide this from you much longer. We need to figure out how to handle this with Mila. There it was. Proof. Owen wasn't just my stepbrother. He was my father's biological son. That's why dad had given him the money. That's why he had always been treated differently. I sat down, the letter clutched in my trembling hands. My father had lied to me for my entire life. He had lied to everyone. I wasn't just dealing with favoritism. I was dealing with a betrayal that had stretched across decades. I couldn't sit still. My heart raced, and I felt like the walls were closing in on me. I had to get out of there. I shoved the letters back into the drawer, closed it up, and bolted out of the house. Driving back to my apartment, I replayed everything in my head. My father's avoidance, Aurora's cryptic responses, my mom's suspicions, they all made sense now. Owen had always been the favored son because he was my father's son in a way I hadn't been told. When I got home, I collapsed on the couch, trying to figure out what to do next. Do I confront my dad with what I found? Do I tell Owen? Should I go to my mom and finally tell her what I've discovered? None of the options felt right. I didn't want to hurt my mom any more than she had already been hurt. But I also couldn't let my dad get away with this. I needed to confront him, to make him tell me why he had kept this from me for so long. And more than anything, I wanted to hear him say it. I wanted him to admit that he had lied to me. But I wasn't sure if I was ready for what would come next. I couldn't take it anymore. The letters weighed heavily in my mind. Their words running on a loop every time I closed my eyes. Our son. Aurora had written. The phrase echoed in my head, reminding me that I had been living in the shadow of a lie my entire life. All I could think about was how my father had betrayed me, not just by giving Owen the money, but by building our whole family on a foundation of deceit. The rage that simmered inside me over the past few days finally reached its boiling point. I had to confront him. The next evening, I drove over to my father's house. It was late, probably too late for a casual visit, but I didn't care. The anger burning inside me pushed me forward as if I were on autopilot. My fists were clenched so tight that my knuckles turned white as I pulled into the driveway. His car was there, and I could see a light on in the living room. He was home. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my nerves, but it didn't work. I was shaking, barely containing the fury that had built up over days of silence. I wasn't sure how this was going to go, but I knew one thing. I wasn't leaving without answers. I didn't knock. I walked straight into the house like I had done a thousand times before, but this time felt different. The familiar smell of the place, a mix of Aurora's perfume and the faint scent of his aftershave, suddenly felt foreign. Everything about the house now seemed like a facade, as fake as the family life we had all pretended to live. My father was sitting in his usual spot, reading a book, completely unaware of the storm brewing inside me. He looked up when I entered, surprised. Wyatt, what are you doing here so late? His voice was calm, like nothing was wrong, like our lives weren't a mess. I couldn't stand it. We need to talk, I said, my voice strained, barely controlled. He could sense something was off. He set the book down slowly and sat up straight. All right, what's this about? The words felt heavy in my mouth, but I forced them out. It's about Owen. At the mention of my stepbrother's name, I saw a flicker of recognition cross his face, but he kept his expression neutral. What about Owen? I know. I spat. I know the truth, Dad. About you. About Aurora. About Owen. His face paled. He didn't say anything. 
but I could see the panic setting in. Wyatt, I don't know what you think you know. Cut the crap. I snapped, my voice rising. I found the letters. Aurora's letters. I know he's your son. Your real son. You've been lying to me my whole life. My chest heaved with each word. The fury that had been building for days, finally spilling out. My father's eyes closed for a moment, and he let out a long, defeated sigh. Wyatt, I don't want excuses. I want the truth. Why didn't you ever tell me? Why did you hide it from me? Why did you treat Owen like he was the only one who mattered? The questions tumbled out of me in a rush, and I could barely keep my voice steady. I felt like a dam had broken inside me. Years of frustration and confusion flooding out all at once. My father stood up, running a hand through his hair, clearly trying to find the right words. But I didn't want to give him time to think. You gave him $200,000 for college. 200 grand. I had to work, I had to struggle to pay for my education, and you handed him everything on a silver platter. And now I know why. Because he's your son, your real son, right? He looked at me, his face a mixture of regret and sorrow. It's not that simple, Wyatt, he said softly. It never was. Then make it simple. I shouted. Just tell me the truth for once in your life. He sat back down, his hands clasped together, and finally began to speak. You're right. Owen is my biological son. It happened during a complicated time in my life. Aurora and I, well, it wasn't planned. It wasn't supposed to happen. But when she got pregnant, I couldn't just abandon them. I couldn't leave Owen without a father. I stood there, my hands shaking with anger. And what about me? What about your son? The one you were supposed to be there for? You spent my whole life lying to me, pretending like we were all some happy family. You let me believe you were a good man. He flinched at that, but I didn't care. I needed him to feel the weight of what he had done. I tried to be a good father, he said, his voice breaking. I tried to give you everything I could. But things got complicated when Owen came into the picture. I didn't handle it well, Wyatt. I didn't know how to explain it to you without hurting you. Hurt me. I laughed bitterly. You've been hurting me my whole life. You just didn't care enough to notice. He looked at me, his eyes filled with something like regret. Wyatt, I'm sorry. I am. I never meant for this to happen. I never meant for you to feel like you weren't important. Then why? I asked my voice quieter now, the rage slowly giving way to something else. Why didn't you ever tell me? Why didn't you help me like you helped him? He sighed again, leaning back in his chair. I gave Owen the money because I felt responsible for him. I know it's not fair, but I couldn't let him struggle. I felt like I owed him that much. I've made a lot of mistakes, Wyatt, and that was one of them. I should have told you the truth a long time ago. I should have been honest with you. I stood there, my anger slowly draining away, leaving me feeling empty. I had spent so much time being furious with him, but now that I finally had the truth, it didn't make me feel any better. It didn't fix anything. So what now? I asked quietly, what am I supposed to do with this? My father didn't have an answer. He just sat there, looking lost, like a man who had finally run out of lies. I don't know, he admitted. I don't know how to fix this, Wyatt. I didn't know either. I had come here expecting a fight, expecting to feel justified in my anger, but now that I had the truth, it didn't feel like a victory. It just felt sad. I'm not sure I can forgive you, I said, my voice trembling. Not yet. He nodded, not meeting my eyes. I understand. I stood there for a few more moments, the silence between us thick and heavy. Finally, I turned and walked out the door leaving my father alone in his empty house. As I drove away, I felt a strange sense of relief, but also a deep sadness. I had gotten the truth, but it had come at a cost. Our family had been shattered long before tonight. I had just never realized how broken we already were. The drive back home felt heavier than it should have. My mind was a whirlwind of emotions. Anger, sadness, confusion, and an overwhelming sense of betrayal. I had finally confronted my father, and I had the truth, but it hadn't brought the relief I expected. If anything, it had left me feeling even more lost. The weight of the lies, the years of deception, crushed me, 
and I couldn't figure out how to process any of it. What do you do when your entire understanding of your family falls apart? I spent the next few days in a daze. I didn't know who to talk to, or if I even wanted to talk about it. There was so much shame tangled up in my anger. How had I not seen this coming? How had I spent my entire life being blind to the reality of my own family? The fact that I had been working so hard, believing I was doing it all on my own, while Owen, my half-brother, apparently, was given everything. It made my stomach turn every time I thought about it. I avoided my mom, Mila, too. I couldn't bring myself to tell her what I had found out. I didn't know how she would react, and I wasn't sure I wanted to see her heart break all over again. She had moved on from the divorce years ago, but if she knew that the entire thing had been built on an affair, on Owen, how would she cope? It felt like I was holding a bomb in my hands, unsure of when or if I should let it explode. Every time I thought about calling her, the phone felt too heavy to pick up. Instead, I focused on the only other person who could possibly know the full story. Owen. He was still at school, so I drove to his campus to finally confront him. After all, if he had known all these years and said nothing, then he had betrayed me too. I felt this gnawing need to know if Owen had been in on the secret, if he had been laughing behind my back this whole time. I couldn't shake the thought that, on some level, he had to have known. Why else would Dad have given him all that money? When I got to his dorm, I could feel the tension building in my chest again, like a ticking time bomb. I knocked on his door, half hoping he wouldn't answer. But of course he did. He looked surprised to see me. Wyatt, what are you doing here? His tone was light, like he didn't have a clue about the storm brewing inside me. I need to talk to you, I said, pushing my way into the room before he could object. I wasn't here for pleasantries. Owen shut the door behind me, confused. What's going on? Is everything okay? No, Owen. Nothing is okay. I snapped, unable to keep the venom out of my voice. He raised an eyebrow, clearly taken aback. What are you talking about? I know, Owen, I said, cutting straight to the point. I know about Dad. I know you're his real son. The color drained from his face. He opened his mouth to say something, but nothing came out. I could see the panic in his eyes. He knew. Of course he knew. Wyatt, I. How long have you known? I demanded stepping closer to him. How long have you known that he was your real dad? Owen looked away, swallowing hard. I've always known, he said quietly. The words hit me like a punch to the gut. I had prepared myself for this answer, but hearing it out loud made it all too real. You've always known? I repeated, my voice rising. You've known our whole lives and you never thought to tell me? You let me think we were just stepbrothers? You let me think that dad was treating us equally? Owen flinched at the accusation. I didn't know how to tell you, he said, his voice barely a whisper. It wasn't my secret to tell. That's bullshit, I spat. You knew I was struggling, working my ass off to pay for school, while you were getting handouts from our father, and you said nothing? You didn't even care? I did care. Owen shot back, his own anger bubbling to the surface. Do you think this was easy for me? I didn't ask to be born into this mess. I didn't ask to be the product of some affair. I didn't want to hurt you, Wyatt. I thought. I thought it was better if you didn't know. Better? I laughed bitterly. For who? For you? For dad? It sure as hell wasn't better for me. The silence between us felt suffocating. Owen didn't have an answer. He just stood there, looking as lost and confused as I felt. You're my brother. I said quietly my voice cracking. I would have stood by you if you had just told me the truth. But now, now I don't know what to think. Owen's face softened, and he took a step toward me. Wyatt, I'm sorry. I really am. I wish I had handled things differently. I wish Dad had told you. But I didn't want to blow up your life like this. Well, too late for that, I muttered, turning toward the door. I guess we're both living with the fallout now. I walked out before he could say anything else. I didn't have the energy to stay and hash it out with him. I didn't know if I could forgive him. The betrayal stung too deeply. As I drove home, I felt the same emptiness that had settled in after my confrontation with Dad. The truth was out now, but it didn't make anything better. It didn't heal the wounds that had been festering for years. If anything, it just opened them wider. 
Back at my apartment, I sat in silence, staring at the ceiling, wondering where to go from here. The truth was, I didn't know. My family was in ruins. I was barely holding on. I thought about all the things I had learned over the past few days, and the weight of it crushed me. How do you move forward when the foundation of your life has been ripped out from under you? How do you rebuild trust when you've been lied to by the people you're supposed to love most? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that I couldn't stay trapped in this cycle of anger and betrayal. I had to make a decision. Either I could let this destroy me, or I could find a way to move forward. But moving forward meant making some hard choices. It meant deciding whether or not I could forgive my father. It meant figuring out whether I wanted to rebuild my relationship with Owen. It meant finally talking to my mom and telling her everything. I picked up my phone, my hands trembling, and dialed my mom's number. I didn't know what I was going to say, but I knew I couldn't carry this burden alone anymore. The phone rang once, twice, then her familiar voice answered. Wyatt, honey, is everything okay? I took a deep breath, steadying myself. No, mom, everything is not okay. We need to talk. I sat on the edge of my bed. The phone clutched tightly in my hand as my mother's voice echoed in my ear. Her concern was evident, and I hated that I was about to drop a bomb on her, the same bomb that had torn my world apart just days ago. I took a deep breath, trying to find the right words, but everything felt inadequate. How do you tell your mother that the life she thought she had built with my father was a lie? Mom, it's about dad. I began, my voice shaky. There's something I need to tell you something you don't know. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. The kind of silence that tells you someone is bracing themselves for impact. Wyatt, what is it? You're scaring me. I closed my eyes and forced myself to speak. Dad, he was having an affair with Aurora before the divorce. Owen isn't just my stepbrother. He's dad's biological son. He's been lying to us this whole time. I heard her gasp, and my heart twisted in my chest. The last thing I wanted was to hurt her, but the truth needed to come out. There was no turning back now. For a moment, she didn't say anything. I could only hear her breathing, shallow and uneven. I always had a feeling, she whispered finally. But to hear it confirmed, Wyatt, I don't know what to say. Her voice was soft, laced with pain, and I hated myself for being the one to bring her this news. I'm sorry, Mom, I said my own voice cracking. I didn't know how to tell you. I found the letters in Dad's office. They were from Aurora, written before the divorce. I confronted him about it, and he admitted everything. The silence that followed was thick and heavy, as if the weight of all the years of betrayal was too much for either of us to handle. Wyatt, thank you for telling me, she said, her voice steadier now, though I could hear the heartbreak beneath the surface. I wish I could say I'm surprised but part of me always knew something wasn't right. I stayed on the phone with her for a while longer, listening to her process everything. She didn't cry, at least not while we were on the phone, but I could feel her sadness through every word. We ended the conversation with no clear resolution, just a shared understanding that the past couldn't be changed. I hung up, feeling both relieved and hollow. The truth was out, but it didn't make anything better. It just laid everything bare exposing the wounds that had been festering for years. In the days that followed, I found myself at a crossroads. The truth had blown up my family, but I couldn't live in the wreckage forever. I had to figure out what came next, whether that meant rebuilding some semblance of a relationship with my father and Owen, or cutting ties altogether. The thought of walking away from it all was tempting. It would be easier, cleaner, to just leave the mess behind and start fresh. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I didn't want to carry this anger with me for the rest of my life. So, I made a decision. I called my father. The conversation was brief and awkward, but I told him we needed to talk. Not another confrontation, but a real conversation. He agreed, and two days later, we met at a diner, somewhere neutral, away from the house that held too many memories and too many lies. When I walked in, he was already sitting at a booth, looking tired older than I remembered. He glanced up when I approached, giving me a tentative smile. Wyatt, he said softly, standing up to greet me. I nodded, sitting down across from him. We sat in silence for a moment, neither of us knowing where to start. 
Finally, I spoke. I don't know what to do with all of this, Dad. I admitted, my voice low. I don't know how to move forward from everything I've learned. But I don't want to carry this anger around for the rest of my life. It's exhausting. He nodded, his eyes downcast. I know. And I'm sorry, Wyatt. For everything. I never wanted it to come to this. I thought. I thought I was protecting you by not telling you. But I was wrong. I should have been honest from the beginning. I don't know if I can forgive you, I said bluntly. Not yet, anyway. But I'm willing to try. For my own sake, more than anything. I don't want this to ruin the rest of my life. He looked up at me then, his eyes filled with something like hope. I understand. I'll take whatever you're willing to give, Wyatt. I just want to make things right, if that's even possible. We sat there for a long time, talking about everything, about the affair, about Owen, about the years of lies. It wasn't easy. In fact, it was one of the hardest conversations I'd ever had. But by the end of it, I felt lighter, like I had finally taken the first step toward healing. It wasn't perfect. Nothing about our relationship would ever be perfect again. But it was a start. After that, I reached out to Owen. I wasn't sure how to approach him after our last confrontation, but I knew we couldn't leave things the way they were. We agreed to meet, and when we did, I could see the guilt written all over his face. Wyatt, I'm so sorry, he said as soon as we sat down. I should have told you. I should have been honest from the beginning, I sighed, running a hand through my hair. Yeah, you should have. But it's done now. We can't change the past, he nodded his eyes filled with regret. I know. I just hope we can move forward. You're my brother, Wyatt. I don't want to lose that. I looked at him, really looked at him, and for the first time in a long time, I didn't feel that burning resentment. I still had a lot to process, a lot to work through, but maybe, just maybe, we could find a way to rebuild what had been broken. I don't want to lose that either, I said quietly, but it's going to take time, Owen. This isn't something we can just fix overnight. He nodded, understanding. I'll wait as long as it takes. In the end, I realize that family isn't always about the blood you share or the roles you're assigned. It's about the choices you make, the forgiveness you offer, and the love you're willing to fight for. I wasn't sure what the future held for me, my father, or Owen, but I knew one thing. I wasn't going to let the past define me anymore. I was ready for a new beginning. Or at least, I was ready to try. If you like this story, subscribe right away and listen to new stories every day. Let us know what you like the most in the comments.